Hi guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I'm really excited because I'm getting to review these two bikes. Both e-bikes, both 2021. This bike is a YT Decoy Elite and this bike is a specialized Kinevo Expert. This is my bike. This is Garrett's bike. Gareth is sound because Gareth contacted me on my YouTube channel and offered me a test ride. So we all love Gareth. Only problem is I couldn't persuade him to come into the video, unfortunately. So I'm going to take them here in the gap and we're going to review both of the bikes and see what I like and dislike about them. And I'll tell you all that out in the trails. So for anyone who's seen my previous video, you know, I loved the Knievo so much that I went and bought one. So whatever bike I put up against it will have its work cut out for it. When picking up the decoy for the first time, I noticed that it felt a little bit lighter than my Knievo. Unfortunately, I didn't have my amazing trusty weighing machine with me, so I didn't get a chance to weigh it. It does come in at around 23 kilograms, with the Knievo coming in just a smidge over 24 kilograms. This is probably down to the top spec components on the decoy, including a carbon frame whereas the Knievo has an aluminium frame. However, the decoy has a 540 watt battery compared to a gigantic 700 watt battery on the Knievo, which up until yesterday, I'd never managed to drain fully. You'll have to watch my next video for that adventure. In terms of travel, the decoy, or duck as some people call it, comes with 165 mm of travel out back, while the Knievo gives a whopping 180 mm of travel. I've managed to need this on one or two bigger hits and casings. The Decoy Elite comes with a brilliant 170mm Fox Float Factory 38 up front, which is super plush and just an amazing fork. It has bling Kashima coating and comes with high and low speed rebound and compression adjustments, as well as the option to attach a mudguard without cable ties. It does take a while to dial in and I had to speed up the rebound by about six clicks to make it comfortable for me. But once I did this, it was really confidence inspiring. The Kinevo comes with a 180mm RockShock Boxer Select Fork and I just love this fork. It's so planted and stable and it saved my life on a few occasions. Giving me confidence to push this bike harder than I've ever thought I could. It required less tinkering than the Fox to set it up right due to less available customization. Although I did have to set the sag around 20 psi more than the recommended pressure to get it feeling right for me. I think it's one of the few e-bikes out there with a dual crown fork and gives you a very clear indicator as to what the Knievo is designed to do. The Decoy Elite comes with the Fox Float X2 factory shock and this is a great shock. As with the 38s, it comes with high and low speed rebound and compression, and I didn't have to adjust this at all to get it feeling great. You can also add bottomless tokens or volume spacers in the form of bands that can be attached without taking the shock off the bike. The Kinevo came with a Rock Shock Super Deluxe Select Plus shock, and this took me a while to get it feeling right for me. I've had to speed up the rebound by one or two clicks to get it right and add about 30 psi, so I'm probably at about 25% sag. I was a little bit disappointed that the bike didn't come with the coil shock which was advertised in the picture and it was on the Knievoi test road. I thought it went really well with the bike and it made it feel even more planted. I may have to try to borrow one from someone. Let's talk a bit about the heart of an e-bike, the battery and motor. I think this is where the decoy loses out to the specialized. You'll see from our test that I was able to keep up with the Knievo on a steep hill when I rode the decoy, but I left the decoy eating dust when I rode the specialized. In this test, we rode in the same gear and spun at the same cadence. However, I'm just over 50 kilos and the other rider is just about 80 kilos and weight does make a big difference. This is also down to the 90 newton meters of torque in the specialized Bros motor compared to the 70 newton meters of torque from the Shimano E8000. Don't get me wrong, the E8000 is a really good motor and it has a proven track record. However, I found it less natural on disengagement and noisier when pedaling than the specialized. 
It was super quiet, however, when descending, not like the rattle you get on the newer EP8, which conversely is quieter and more not your feeling when pedaling than the E8000. I suppose you can't have it all, but I'd have loved to have seen the new decoy with the EP8. This may have been down to limited availability or proven reliability, I'm not sure. The battery on the decoy may also be a bit limiting for some riders. The 540 watt battery was perfectly fine for me for a two and a half hour spin in trail mode, which is the medium level of assistance, and I use around 55% of the battery in this mode. However, it may not be ideal for heavier riders or those who want to do really long spins in any mode other than eco. It's also a custom YT battery, so for people who want to take their bikes on a plane and rent a battery in another location, they may not have availability of these batteries. The components on the Decoy Elite are all pretty much top end or close to top end. It comes with brilliant Crank Brothers Synthesis E11 carbon wheels in a mullet setup. This was the first time I rode a mullet bike and I have to say that I really, really loved it. Having the 29 inch wheel up front gave lots of grip and enabled the bike to go really fast without ever feeling like it was going to wash out, even on the loose corners. It comes with SRAM code RSC brakes and a full Shimano XT drivetrain, which is super smooth and reliable. It has a Maxxis Asagai up front and DHR2 outback, which is a great combination of tyres. Lastly, it has a really smooth and reliable Fox Factory transfer dropper seat post with blinging Kashima coating and 175mm drop. The Kinevo Expert comes with Roval DH 27.5 aluminium wheels front and back, and this setup really suits the Kinevo. I'm not sure a 29er would work up front on this bike due to the already long front triangle and tall front end. I'd say I'd struggle on the tight tree runs we have here in Ireland. However, it would still be nice to have this as an option without having to buy a new fork. I believe Marshall Mullen has done this on his channel, but I'll not be parting with my boxer fork any time soon. The Kinevo Expert has SRAM GX11 speed setup, and I can safely say I've never needed the 12 speeds on this bike. I don't think I've ever even gone into the highest gear. It has SRAM Code R brakes, which aren't as good as the Code RSC brakes on the decoy. I'm thinking of changing either the rotors to two 20mm rotors, or going with Shimano XT brakes, or Megora's MT7s, which I hear are really good. The Kinevo comes with specialised butcher 2.6 inch tyres, front and back, and I've been super impressed with these tyres. They offer a consistent level of grip in all sorts of conditions from rain, snow, dust and muck. We've had plenty of all this in the last month in Ireland and these tyres have not let me down yet. I had to change them to tubeless as I finally punctured the rear tube that came stock with the bike after about two months. Lastly, the Kinevo comes with a command post dropper post, which is 160mm of travel. This is a good dropper post, however, if I hadn't ridden the demo bike, I'd have thought there was something wrong with it, as it makes a bit of a clacking noise when you drop it into position. On to sizing and geometry. The decoy I rode was a size extra large and comes in five sizes from small to extra extra large. The extra large is suited for riders six feet and above and as I'm only five foot four it was probably a bit big for me and I'd say the medium would be a better fit. However, even in extra large, this bike felt super comfortable particularly with the handlebars swept back a few degrees. This may have been because the size has the same reach as my Kinevo in 470mm and I'm pretty comfortable with this. While the decoy has a lower standover height than the Kinevo, there is a bit of the seat tube sticking up above the frame so that when I fully dropped the seat post on the decoy, it didn't go nearly as far down as it does on the Kinevo. This probably isn't a big issue for tall riders, but for me, I like to have the seat as low as possible when descending so I can move around the bike a bit and dab if I need to. The decoy has a 64.5 or 65 degree head angle, which made it feel like a very capable super enduro bike and probably puts it in the same category as the new Levo, I'd say. The Kinevo has a 64 degree head angle and gives a confidence inspiring feeling, particularly when things get rough or steep. Okay, on to dislikes. 
Well, for the decoy, it would have to be the strange bottle cage and bottle combo, which is custom but looks a bit odd. There is also the battery and older motor. For the Knievo, it would be the rock guard. This is super weak and I managed to smash it on my first ride over an innocuous log. It's made of cheaper plastic and breaks easily and at around 50 euro for the replacement, I ended up ordering a custom e-bike bash guard from Amigos to protect it. I'd also like better brakes and possibly a mullet option now that I've seen how capable these mullet bikes are. So a few little things I love about these bikes. For the decoy, it will be the price. At just under 7,000 euros, you get a lot of bike with top end components and a five year warranty on the frame and two years on the components. I also loved the mullet option and randomly the walk mode on this bike is really, really good. For the Knievo, I love the large battery, powerful motor, SWAT multi-tool that comes on the bottle cage and the fact that this bike has a lifetime warranty on the frame and two years on the components. It's slightly more expensive at just over 7,800 euro, but having specialized support in my city gives real peace of mind in case anything goes wrong. In conclusion, these are both amazing bikes and I'd be more than happy to own either of them. I'm really lucky and thankful that I do own the Knievo and also that Garth was so kind to lend me the decoy for the test ride. For a more like for like comparison, I'd love to put the Decoy Elite up against the new Levo and the Knievo up against the Commensal Meta Power SX. Stay tuned and subscribe so you are notified when I get to do these videos hopefully. Thanks so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. I did a lot of trails on the two bikes that day, so I'll leave you with the inevitable fall caused by tiredness. Thankfully, it was on my own bike and not Garrett's.